So as the moderator, I get a couple of minutes since my co-moderator here. Uh, first of all, thank you everyone again for coming. So as you see that, well, we have six presentations. So uh, we have team, Peter and Paul talked about a lot of things about from field. Uh, what do you see? What kind of different issues? So workability is a very important thing related to different kinds of concrete. So I'm chairing committee 238 right now for the next and for the next few days, I'm stepping down. But when we talk about workability, most people talk about like SCC or highly flowable concrete. But workability is important for all the different kinds of concrete. Without proper workability, you cannot get successful construction. And that workability also relate very much to vibration, especially when we talk about payment. You do need to look at workability under vibration. So these are the things very important for us to have a success construction for different kinds of co concrete, including pavement concrete. So now I'm gonna switch gear a little bit talking about from a design standpoint, what kind of things we deal with. So uh, I'm gonna get into optimization of aggregation so that we can start to look at a, how different kinds of mixtures respond to uh, pavement concrete. So uh, I'll talk a little bit about aggregation optimization then we'll talk about different methods to achieve that. And I know that Tyler will get more into detail. So I'll scan through that pretty quick. Then uh, the main thing I'm spending time to talk about will be the, the project we did for Nebraska DOT on reducing cement content from NDOT mixes through optimization and how they perform on pavement concrete. And if I do have time, I'll talk a little bit about using similar approach for recycle concrete aggregate. Like, can we use that same approach for payment concrete? So, in talk about why we need to reduce cement content. So, as a, as a concrete person, you talk a lot about cement. But on the other hand, cement is not necessarily a good thing. So, when you look at this, first of all, cement is more costly. Any producer know that. Well, try to reduce cement content, we have a cost benefit. From a technical standpoint, a lot of cement will bring issues, particularly introduce high amount of shrinkage. So if you can figure out a way to reduce the cement content, you can reduce the shrinkage and can make the concrete more durable. So the way we look at that is when you look at concrete, you have aggregate, you have cement paste. So on a cement paste, you have a good amount of cement paste is to fill the voids among aggregate particles. So that's a minimum amount of cement paste you need. Without that, you're gonna end up with voids. But we do need additional amount, depending on the type of concrete, that additional amount could be different because you want concrete to be workable. So not like asphalt concrete, you use roller compactor. For concrete use or without using of vibrator, we need concrete to be able to move. So you do need this thin, thin layer of this, we call excess paste, so that allow aggregate to separate a little bit from each other. That way concrete is workable. So the design is try to optimize the gradation yet maintain the same amount of excess pace. That's your approach. So look into tools we have. On the one hand, we have all the different kinds of tools from theoretical. So from the old 0.45A18 to the new tarantula curve. And then we also have theoretical models like modified TOEFL model, modified a a model. On the other hand, we have experimental methods. You can void content has STM C29, everyone knows that. So, but we can do combine aggregate. And so just cause aggregate, you can combine that with fine aggregate. So, and through that, you can come out, hey, do we have the real optimization or not? So show you the result a little bit. And talk about experimental part. So this is a method we use, a modified ASTM C29, uh, with combined, of course, and fine aggregate. Look at the difference. This is well. This is a well graded one. This is not a well graded one. You can clearly see the void content that's different. The other thing we did is besides combine coarse and fine, we had to use this process, vibration plus pressure. So again, especially for pavement concrete, the response of vib concrete under vibration is very different. So this approach we use actually for the aggregate part, we also introduce vibration as well, just so you can get a different, uh, different, different measure compared to the traditional rotting method. So 
And the theoretical part, we use this uh, modified TOEFL model. And basically there's a combination of your uh, packing density as well as the aggregate size. I'm not gonna get into details. We have this paper published in a ASCE journal a couple of years ago. So, and then now I'm gonna look at test methods. I know this is what Dr. Tyler Lates developed and he's gonna talk more about this, but really quick, we did use, we use this box test. Again, the key thing is look at how the concrete respond on the vibration. Two things you want to look at and make sure you don't have excess amount of voice like this. Second is whether you have good edge holding ability. Because that's important for success payment construction. And a few modifications we made, and one of the things we use is instead of using visual judgment, we actually use uh, image analyze. I know there are limitations of this because we get all this data from our from our lab, the lighting condition is pretty consistent. But I do want to show people this, that uh, hopefully some smart people like all the students here come up with something like in the future, we can use our iPhone to take a picture and get a voice content and translate this instead of have to make the judgment based on the eye. But the other thing we look at is the, the edge holding ability, of course. So now I'm going to get into our design. So to, just to start with, most of you probably don't know Nebraska get a very different design uh, of concrete and concrete pavement. Particularly, we use a lot of these so-called sand and gravel. So mix is quite different compared to most other states. Uh, so this is our sand and gravel. This is our limestone. Uh, so we use one piece cement for this case. And look at our pack, particle packing results. So based on that modified ASTM C29, when you look at this, so this is what we have. So with the void content test, you have the vibration plus pressure. Apparently you have the lowest void content. So our standard mix is actually, it's a 70-30 blend, 70 of the sand and gravel, 30 of limestone. But based on our method, our result, we actually get about 55, 45 blend, which is more optimal. And we, we also have this compared to our theoretical model, the modified TOEFL model. You can see it actually match pretty well, especially under that vibration plus pressure method. So this just confirmed that the 55, 45 blend is better than our traditional blend. So for the test, we actually break it into two phases. First phase is to look at how the standard uh, gradation versus optimized gradation or change gradation end up different results. And the other thing is that can we start to reduce cement content. So this is a phase one. Then we keep our cement content constant. The only things we change is look at the sand and gravel versus limestone blend from 70, 30 to 60, 40, 55, 45, 50, 50. Uh, when you look at the results, the standard one works pretty well. We get a good index from box test. And then of course it's supposed to be Otherwise we'll be in trouble. And then after that, we start to optimize the gradation, change the gradation, you can see that well, 60, 40 works well. This one, not so much, 55, 45, keep in mind, that's actually the optimum one we find out earlier. And then uh, 50, 50 is not that well, maybe you're doing, getting too much of limestone. But going back to this, when we go back to this, hey, we want these things to work because that's what our op optimized gradation, and then look at, this again, we do fail the box test, but this is not actually because the mix is bad. It's actually because this mix has too much of that pace, too much of that excess pace. Going back to this, because we have the optimal gradation, we don't need that much about amount of pace to feel the voice. So this mix with optimal gradation actually end up that this is one we move forward because apparently, the mix is not stable, but that's because of too much of pace we have. But let's start to reduce demand pace based on this. So phase two, with reference mix, we start to reduce demand from six sec to 5.55 and then 4.5 sec. So look at our standard gradation, uh, reduced to 5.5 sec. You can see that the box is not very good. You have a box ranking of three, you have a lot of voice but with some help with water reduce, you can still make that workable, just a little bit stretching. But when you're looking into keep reducing it, 
And to find sex, there's really not much you can do. You just literally don't have enough space. So, uh, but if you add some water reduced, we actually add a fairly high amount. It's still, we can make the, at least you can run the test, but still the result is not very good. Now let's look into optimized gradation. So with optimized gradation, 55, 45 blend we have, with half a set of reduction of cement, we have no issue of getting the right performance. And then when we start to keep going below five sacks, little bit help with a water reducer and 4.5 is probably too much. From six to 4.5, that's quite a lot of jump. But this just tells you you still need a certain amount of cement paste. So strength-wise, all the mixes are pretty good. Uh, actually, all the mixes meet NDOD specification with compressive strength, model rupture, as well as durability. So we don't really have an issue with that. Uh, how's my time? Still good? Okay, really quick talk about the other thing. This is a, uh, a project funded by ACI on uh, recycle concrete aggregate. So the focus is more on measuring different properties of recycle aggregate. But we actually, but the other part of this project is look at how do we design concrete with recycle concrete aggregate. So basically we use the same philosophy. Try to make sure that well, when you design recycle concrete aggregate, you do have to consider you have to have enough excess space. So look at these, we did include a lot of different kinds of aggregate from different locations. And these are the, what the six we selected for our uh, concrete mixtures. So just to really quick get into the design of concrete is recycled aggregate, compared to normal concrete, what the design of concrete is recycled aggregate is, we don't have a consistent agreement. So there are different approach. Most of people just try something and then say add 50 pounds of cement because you have a high void content, but the uh, methods people use, including direct weight replacement, basically just replace the natural aggregate with the same mass amount of coarse aggregate, uh, coarse recycled aggregate, or you have water replacement. But the one we use is the one I talked about early on to maintain the same excess paste contact. Look at the, look at this, uh, the standard mix we have is this mix we came up with the 55-45 blend, and then the excess space to aggregate ratio is 0.12. And for the direct uh, weight replacement, direct water replacement, actually get a negative one. So meaning that you don't actually have enough cement paste to even code the egg, to fill the aggregate, uh, fill the voids amount aggregate. But for our recycled aggregate mix, this five aggregate, we actually maintain the same excess space to aggregate contact. All these are standard payment mix, by the way. So look at the results uh, for our food. Standard Nebraska mix, it looks like this. And then all the five mixes with recycle aggregate actually works pretty well. The two that uh, direct weight, direct water replacement, I don't have the picture over here. They're just not even close to being acceptable because good. Okay, almost done. So, and then look at the other properties. So from the mechanic property, they all have with the standard mix and then comparing to the standard mix, actually all the recycled concrete mixtures actually have higher strengths. Again, we maintain the same excess space content. So that actually makes sure that we have enough mobility and don't have negative impact on strengths. Um, that's what I have. So a, a quick thing is about conclusion. So the modified TOEFL model is a good tool for you to use for design. Uh, in this project, we actually justify that it works pretty well for pavement concrete. And cement content can be reduced by up to one sack. And if you can maintain a good design through aggregate optimization, mixed design procedure combined with both theoretical and experimental work works pretty well. And then the recycle aggregate you can use that. So again, going back to workability uh, payment concrete is just a demonstration that you can use workability tests in the design method to design and optimize your uh, payment concrete. With that, uh, I do have a collection of all the different animals working <laughs> on payment. So it's a good test.